This is Carl at National RV Detroit. We're going to walk you through this 2023 Flagstaff E Pro model number 19 FBS. So, this is a how to video. It's not a floor plan video. I'm just going to show you some of the features and how they work. So, you start off, you have a power awning with LED strip, uh, regular crank down uh, scissor type stabilizers. You have some power here, outside speaker. This is the vent for the range hood, so if you're going to be using the fan in the range hood, uh, you want to free up this baffle here like that so it flaps freely. Uh, otherwise, you can snap it shut when you're traveling or in storage. This rail, the grill hangs on, the griddle hangs on. Uh, to plug it in, you get a, a hose and you plug it in right here at this quick connect under the trailer. So that's how you get uh, LP to your griddle. Okay, so uh, this this is just uh, if you wanted to purchase a a um, a kit to charge the battery. It's a solar panel kit uh, made by Go Power. That's what that's for. It's just an option. Uh, you're getting your hits here so that the Husky center line weight distribution hits with built-in sway control. We'll show you how that operates when you pick up. Uh, deep cycle marine batteries, uh, two LP tanks uh, with automatic changeover regulator. You have your power tongue jack. Now the power tongue jack, if it happens to fail, you can pull this piece out here, you see you just pull the pin out and unthread it. And then you can actually put a, a six point socket or the, a crank on there, it's three quarter inch. You can actually crank this manually to get yourself out of trouble. So if it ever fails, you can always get a hitch and unhitch. So that's a good feature. Now there's a battery kill switch, it's hard to see. You just have to trust me that it's right there. If you can't see it, it's a knob. You can turn the battery on and off right there. Docking lights. Okay, so you have a, a inline water heater. This is the hose that I told you about, the LP line for the, uh, for the griddle right here. You have a dump hose right here, a caster or a wheel, I guess you would say, a nose wheel. There's your crank right there. Okay, now. Uh, the most common way to get water to the trailer, of course, is the city water hookup, which is right here. Now, if you happen to be boondocking or camping someplace without city water, you can pre-fill your, your fresh water tank here and then use the onboard pump to pump the water when you get where you're going. So those are two different options. This is where you draw your antifreeze into the system right here. Cable and satellite through, okay? Here. <coughs> You have your water heater. It's it's empty right now, as you can see. There's the plug, and, the, and it's empty right there. Um, inch and a sixteenth six-point socket to get that in and out. So uh, it's also bypassed in the back. So keep in mind before you before you run the water heater, you got to make sure you put the valves in the correct position, put the plug in, and make sure you fill it up before you turn it on. That's important, obviously. This it runs on both gas and electric. The, uh, this is the, there's a heating element, beh element behind this cover, and then you have your gas valve here. Uh, there's switches inside the trailer to operate that. I'll show you that when we get inside, okay? Never run it without water in it. Okay, your fresh water drain is right there, that white gate valve. That's to, to store your dump hose in, that little uh, sleeve there. The, uh, your slide out is in right now of course. You have a 25 foot 30 amp power cord. This is your black tank flush here. So after you dump your black tank valve, which is over here, which is toilet water and waste, you can hook the hose at the dump station right on here, but as it says on the sticker here, always make sure the valve is open before you turn the water on. But you can turn it, you can flush it out, clean out the tank really well plus clean off the sensor, so it's a, it's a really good thing to do. If, if you got a working hose at the dump station, it's a good thing to do. This is uh, just a, a shower. It's a handheld shower slash sprayer. 
Okay. You're getting a, a backup camera with this one, so it's on right there. You have a ladder, which makes it easy to inspect the roof. The manufacturer states every 60, 90 days to send somebody up there and look around. Be very careful, obviously. Look at all the, the um, all of the sealant. Make sure there's no cracking or separation where water can get through. Uh, make sure there's no damage to any of the roofing attachments or roofing material by, let's say, low branches or road debris. You just take a look at it. You can't see what's happening up there unless you go up there and look and you're protecting your investment so it should be part of your regular maintenance just make sure you don't hurt yourself okay this also has a keypad if you look in your packet it'll give you the or maybe even here it'll give you the, the default code okay all right so as we first come in let me get over here hold on we'll send the slide out first so slide out And those are the white seals rubbing on the trailer. Okay. Of course, this one here is for your power awning. Never leave the awning out unattended. If you're not going to be at the campsite, roll it in. Uh, this tells you about an app for this. Um, your Wi-Fi booster is here. Um, it's got a Wi-Fi Ranger in it, so keep in mind that this sticker up here is important. The top line in the sticker tells you that your Wi-Fi Ranger is called Tenton 1915. So when you look at your, your family's Wi-Fi settings, that's what you'll be looking for. Then the bottom line, you can't see very well, but it's, a, it's an IP address for the control panel of this thing. And then the middle one is temporary password, change me now 1915, to get onto that page. Um, you can obviously put your own password in there when you get it set up. But it boosts your public Wi-Fi really well. It gives you a good strong signal and um, so the idea is all your family's phones will be hooked up to uh, or in tablets if you if you have cellular but or if you have Wi-Fi in them the uh, um, they'll all be hooked up to the Wi-Fi Ranger so um, the password will be in there so it'll automatically connect when it's searching for Wi-Fi then when you get to the different campgrounds or wherever you're going you look up the public Wi-Fi because when you when you go on the page to the control panel through that IP address and put the password in, you have to be able to see everything the Wi-Fi Ranger sees, right? So you'll pick out, let's say, the campground Wi-Fi and then log on to that. So everybody else has already logged on to this. You just have to go and log this on to the public Wi-Fi with the Wi-Fi Ranger. Um, if you have any more information, need more information, there's stuff in your packet. Plus, you can always go to their website, too. There's a code here, too. So, okay. Um, your water heater on gas is right there. On electric is right there. Never run it without water in it. Your water pump is right here. Remember the water pump is to pump water out of the fresh water tank if you don't have city water. It's also used to winterize the trailer. And then you have tank heaters on this one. So all your 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 um, your tanks, your fresh tank, your gray tank, your black tank, they all have uh, heating pads on them. So when you turn that on, it'll extend your camping season. That's to connect to the app. And these are of course lights and you get all your levels right here okay very simple as I spin around here this refrigerator so this is a great option this refrigerator has a power switch you turn it on and off the reason that's great is because it's a 12 volt refrigerator right so you have solar panel and uh, so that the solar panels constantly charging your battery so when you put it in storage let's say It'll keep your battery charged up enough so you'll always have power in it when you, you know, when you go to retrieve it from storage, for example. Um, but if you have a 12 volt refrigerator, it's going to be gobbling up the power, so you're you're just barely going to be keeping pace with it. So in effect, you won't have anything stored. That therefore, you can shut this off when you're not using it, and you don't have that problem. It takes this right out of the loop, so it's not going to be using up your limited 12 volt power while it's just sitting there in, in storage, for example. Um, that's the best. That's the best uh, thing I can you know, come up with. The best. Um, um, uh, what am I looking for? Uh, the best situation when it comes to uh, saving power. There's other things, you, reasons you can shut it off too if you just don't need it. Period. But mainly when you're when you just have the solar panel charging the battery, all that charge goes into the battery, 
and stays there a little bit just comes out because this this um carbon monoxide lp gas detector is is hardwired to it so that'll always be using power um but the refrigerator is not so this should always be green if it's not green get it serviced also if it beeps very slowly it's telling you that your battery is low so it does carbon monoxide lp gas and low battery this is your power converter so this converts uh ac to dc power so um, you've got regular 110 AC circuit breakers here, uh, and they're all labeled. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC. On this side, you've got 12 volt fuses, and they're all labeled. And it's a battery tender, so it'll always sense how much energy your battery up front on the tongue they need, and um, it'll always keep them charged up uh, as long as you're plugged into shore power. So it's a, a, con a distribution panel. It converts AC to DC power plus keeps your batteries charged when you're plugged in. Okay, that's the power converter. Now, let me talk more about power. That's the converter. That goes from AC to DC. Over here, you have just the opposite. It's called an inverter. It goes from DC to AC. So, you turn it on right there, and right now that's inverting power. So it's taking the 12 volt DC out of your battery and inverting it to 110 AC and then sending that power to your outlets. So let's say right here, that is uh, now if, if you were not plugged in to, to uh, regular AC current, it would still be producing AC for those plugs. Um, another one here and the one on the side here I believe, yes, another one. So the idea is you can run a small AC appliance, let's say you're boondocking and you don't have any AC power at all, you're just running off of a, a battery and solar panel. If you need to run out like a blender or a, a coffee pot that runs on AC power, you can just turn on the inverter, plug it in, and it will produce enough energy from your 12 volts batteries to, uh, to run it, okay? Um, when you're not using it, just shut it off. You hold it for a couple seconds, just three seconds, I think, to shut it off, and there it goes. So if you're not inverting power, there's no reason to have it on. Hopefully I explained that well enough for you. Okay, so this, this is the solar controller right here. So, um, this basically is your solar controller and charger. So it's what you're looking at right now. First of all, let me do something real quick here. second there we go I'm just setting this to the correct battery the guy who prepped it did not do that yet so stop it right there oops let me do it again time to do it right okay there we got it so it's on a flooded battery right now where it should be if you if you get gel batteries you change it if you got a, if you were to get a lithium you can change it to lithium but this is what we have here now, so it's giving you a correct reading. So, you, uh, the only button you have to worry about right now is button B. So, we'll go right to the beginning. Okay, so you're, you have 13.7 volts DC in your system right now. Just This is just the DC voltage. So, it's a 12 volt system, so 13.7 is perfect. Push B again. And right now we're gaining 1.0 amps from the sun and, and storing it into your battery. It's, a, it's snowing out, it's cloudy, you know, so you're not, there's not much sunlight. That'll go up as, as, as the time of day and the conditions outside, it'll go up 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, point whatever. Uh, so that's telling you how, you can see the picture of the sun there and the arrow pointing towards the solar panel. Right now we're we're, we're getting one amp from the sun and storing it into your battery. Okay? The next one, you're 100% you're charged, right? And we have 44 amp hours. That's how much, you, how much energy you have in storage, okay? So you get four re readings from pushing the B button, starting with 13.7 in the system. Now you can charge a phone from here. There are some other things you can read about, but button B is where it's at, and the most important things are how much voltage is in your in your 12 volt system in this case 13.7 and what you're gaining from the sun now if this starts flashing and says ful and just flashes and will, will not respond to any of the buttons 
it's not broke it's telling you that the batteries are totally charged there's no more room for storage so it shut the panel off as soon as the energy drops in the battery it'll go right back to your normal screens that so that's just telling you it's totally totally um no place else for storage okay um so that's the solar controller so we've got the power converter which goes from ac to dc you got the power inverter which goes from dc to ac and sends the power to the receptacles the duplex receptacles and then you have your solar charger controller which tells you what's happening with the 12 volt system and the solar panel okay all right this obviously is a thermostat it's very simply just put the mode hit the mode button we're on heat right now just keep hitting it you'll, next you'll go through fan fan is just the air conditioner running without the compressor just circulates air and then heat it again it'll say cool and um so uh, uh that's obviously air conditioning low cool high cool and then the next one will be heat so the next one after heat will be off for example if i hit it again it would shut the, the furnace off so just a thermostat like i said you got a 12 volt refrigerator here i explained the switch to you you should always have this latch your microwave works like any other microwave there's nothing unique about it okay you have a connect system now this connect system you can see back here maybe you can see it. it's a swing out bracket so you can swing this out it locks into place um, it also has this this is an FM radio it has Bluetooth and two speaker zones A and B A is inside the trailer B is outside the trailer so it's more than just a TV it's also your sound okay um, where, where this where your your TV cable connects into the system it'll have a you'll see a little LED with a button next to it you always want that on that's telling you that your digital antenna is turned on okay uh, this is your griddle that hangs on the rail out there that I told you about this is a utility table that hangs next to it um, this is all your stuff here your all your literature obviously your remote this is for your your uh, backup camera will show you how this works when you pick up and this is another thing this is a monitor for your for your wheels your hubs and your tires so in each one of your your wheels out there uh, on the wheel inside the tire directly across from the valve stem there's going to be a sensor that's already already been put there by the manufacturer so this basically reads the sensor you, you can set it to um, you know give you an audible alert if you start to lose air or if it's overfilled, it'll uh, it also tests the, uh, the checks the temperature of your hubs. It'll tell you if it's overheating, that sort of thing. So that's that comes with it. Um, okay, let me look around here. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's see what else you can see here, if anything. You get a spatula. You get a toilet paper holder and a towel rack if you choose to use it. Um, this is a uh, a collar for your dump hose in case you run over yours or something you can always make this work okay um, your range works like they all do in, the, in that this is the sparker right here and then you have three knobs for the three burners and then that's for the oven I don't know what you've got here there you go that simple when it comes to the oven you uh, down here you have a pilot light you can see it's sparking down there right so you go to the oven knob you go to the picture of the pilot light you depress it and then you keep it depressed with the other hand you spark this until it lights down here once it lights you still hold this in for another 10 or 15 seconds to heat up the thermocouple then you go to operating temperature and when you shut it off the flame goes out but so does the pilot light so you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven you have a light up here and then your oven light down there also okay always travel with this closed or it'll break see what else we've got in here though, in case I'm missing something okay this this couch jackknifes flat so you can uh, turn it into a bed your table is right behind it you just pull it out and set it up when it comes to your bathroom most of it is pretty typical but you have a, do have a GFCI in here remember all the plugs in the trailer are wired through a GFCI so keep that in mind um, toilet works like all RV toilets it sits right over a black tank so um, you can see there's antifreeze in it now so there's your flush pedal right there so when you get to the campground you hook up your power and your water of course you then you come in here you put a dose of chemical right in the bowl 
and you step on your pedal and hold it down and put at least a gallon of water in there with, along with the uh, along with the chemical and then you're ready to be using it. You can put more than a gallon but don't use less. Um, if you don't do that, that's considered using it dry and it'll get clogged up for sure and it'll smell super terrible for sure. So you always want your chemical and water in there. Now one other eco thing here is this shower miser right here. The shower miser is a recirculating system for, for water. Um, obviously while you're in most conditions when you're heating up the hot water to take a shower or heating up the cold water to take a shower um, the water just goes down the drain perfectly good water so therefore you're wasting good water and in some places with drought conditions you're not supposed to do that obviously and you're also wasting storage in your gray tank with perfectly good water so that's where this comes in you can put this into position if three different positions you put this in a position and nothing when you turn on the hot water nothing comes out the shower head it just recirculates it circulates in a circle um, from here to the water heater to the water pump around and around and around to heat up once it heats up this bluish plastic thing here will turn beige It'll be plain as day that's when you know it's hot enough so then you'll just put it to, to normal position and it'll work like a regular shower so it's a it's a device to save water um, if you like if you need to learn anything more about these components you do have literature in that packet, plus you can always go to their websites and look at their customer videos too. That's another good way. This fan here is a four-speed fan. It's a really good one. The lower two speeds, you can barely hear it. The um, top speeds will almost pull your hair straight up, so it's a really powerful fan and quiet if you need it to be. And um, obviously, one, for example, an, another scenario for the fan is, let's say you got people over, and it's that time of year where you start to get condensation from your breath and everybody's having a good time and it's getting late but you start to see a few droplets here and there well if you put this on turn this on low you'll never know it's running and it will pull all that condensation out so it's it's got it's it's a really good thing to, to use under those circumstances so okay this is your escape window of course now here up front here i didn't show you the 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 ant layers the the uh the jacket bike system one back bike hangs on each side of that one on the inside one on the outside all the attachments are facing outward that's how they ship it but as you're setting up for your bicycles you'll every other one will be facing in the other way right so keep that in mind you just have to set it up for two bikes that's what it holds two bikes and and uh, you have to set it up for your bicycle so okay all right I think I've covered it here let me look around a bit I think I've got it yes Okay, I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Please remember what I said about, um, about inspecting your roof. That's very important. It should be part of your regular maintenance. And uh, right now this is winterized, so the, antifree the water's been purged out of the system replaced with antifreeze. Your water heater is in bypass mode and it's empty right now. Always make sure to fill your water heater before you turn it on, okay? Thank you.